Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing, presented by the Demani Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer. I've been using SolidWorks for almost 15 years now. Do rough surfaces have you on edge? Got a kink in your spline? Zen out and come to really understand how SolidWorks surfacing works. Using advanced techniques, I'll demonstrate surface modeling workflows that allow you to quickly and easily create the most challenging of shapes. Located just outside Chicago, Illinois, the Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy offering industrial design, design engineering, electrical engineering, and software development services. Welcome to another installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. In the next two video installments, we'll be taking a look at freeform surfacing, where we don't actually have any geometry to sculpt like we've been working with in previous examples. We're going to start by working on the handle area of this handheld flashlight. And before we even start to model, we need to have an idea of what kind of surfaces we need to create. So in the image on the right here, we can actually see each of the different surfaces that went into creating this handle, all highlighted in different colors. So having an idea of how you want to create your surfaces is really going to guide your surface creation. So it's always better to try and break the shape down into many different four-sided surfaces and trying to instead of trying to do too much with one different surface so here we have a main surface that forms the bulk area of the handle where your hand will go we have an additional five-sided surface that uh, will act as a transition to the trigger area and then we have a collection of mostly four-sided surfaces that form up the rest of the transition area between the handle and the top of this flashlight additionally we have some more four-sided surfaces that act as a blend between the handle and the 18 volt battery battery receptacle area. So into SolidWorks here, and we can see the current status of this model. We have a bottom area that we will be creating the handle between and a top area, but we don't have any geometry to build off for the middle handle portion. We can't create solids and sculpt them with surfaces. It's gonna be much easier in this case to actually build the geometry between curves and sketches with surface features instead of trying to cut away material. So to start, we need to define some sketches that will help us determine our middle profile that we can guide further sketches with. So I've created a sketch on the right plane here that is kind of roughly the middle. It's actually converted from uh, another sketch. I do have the outer profile of the handle area determined, and I have a reference draft surface. This is a surface extrude created with draft. Uh, this is ultimately going to be an injection molded part, so we want to ensure the correct uh, draft angle for our surface features and they, when they terminate at the parting line. So I have an additional sketch here, and this sketch is actually converted from an entity on the front plane, and this is our side profile of our what the handle will look like. So ultimately what we need to do is create a new 3D curve from these two 2D sketches. And that's really easy to do with the projected curve feature. So here I have it in the tree. So what I'm actually doing is projecting those two sketches on each other and this is creating a new 3D curve. So it's actually really easy to generate 3D curves when working in 2D because we're all familiar with working in the 2D environment. So we just take our two 2D sketches and end up with a single 3D sketch. Uh, just this has been a long issue with SolidWorks. It's actually corrected now where projected curve didn't get handled well in the tree when they got absorbed. So I always had this habit of just converting into a 3D sketch. That's fixed now, but you know, old habits die hard. So I have a 3D sketch that I've simply converted from the projected curve. And now with the projected curve completed, I'm going to create some additional planes. We're going to use these planes for sketches. So this is a very simple plane just between the right plane and a line in one of my layout sketches. And I have an additional plane here also generated from a line from my layout sketches. And I'm going to use these planes to build some new sketches with. Because I don't have any existing geometry in our model, we're going to have to rely on creating additional sketches to build off instead of existing model edges. So here I have a style spline. What I've done is created a couple layout lines to make the style spline tangent to, and these lines reflect the draft angle in the part. And then I've added an additional point. So I don't actually have a point in a style spline because a style spline doesn't have any points on it, unlike the traditional spline. So I've just taken a standard point and made it coincident with the style spline and then pierce the point to our 3D sketch. 
and you can see that it's right here. So this is going to force the style spline to pass through this uh, 3D curve. And this is really important when creating this kind of surface modeling. We need to make sure that all of our profiles intersect each other accurately. So using the pierce command with a point is a really quick and easy way of ensuring that our sketches eventually converge where we need them to. I need to continue with an additional sketch on that other angle plane we created, and it's created in a very similar fashion to the previous one. We have our layout lines, the two degree draft that the style spline has been made tangent to, our additional point that this then been pierced to this sketch here. And now we're ready to go and create our first surface of the handle, and that's going to be a boundary surface. So the boundary surface is going to be constructed between three profiles in direction one and two profiles in direction two. First profile is one edge of our draft reference surface, and we're making that tangent such that we can control the draft angle of our new surface as it approaches the parting line. Fine. Secondly, the surface is passing through this sketch here, and then ultimately terminating at the other side of our draft reference surface, and also being made tangent. In direction two, we have those two sketches we created here and here, and this is creating one nice four-sided surface that will form the bulk of the handle. So here we can see ultimately see everything broken down now that it's been built. We have our two draft reference edges in red. We have our 3D curve in pink. We have our bottom profile in blue and we have our top profile in orange. So to recap, we're starting in 2D by laying out our sketches as required and then moving into the 3D realm by creating a projected curve from those two 2D sketches. We're creating surfaces uh, from our curves, and we're creating planes as required to create our style splines on, and then these are acting as profiles for our boundary surface. So we'll continue developing the surfaces required for defining the shape of this handle. The next surface we need is an extruded surface that will form the flat area the trigger will protrude from. This is an extruded surface with draft built in, and then we don't actually need all of this surface, so we're trimming it back with a trim tool that gives us the flat area that our trigger will live on. We'll continue the shape by creating a, an additional 2D sketch that further defines the shape of the handle through the top portion here. And instead of creating one more complicated style spline, sometimes it's easy to just create an arc and then as portion of your curve and then add a style spline made curvature continuous to it. So this is just a sketched arc. You know, arcs are very easy to define. And so I like this approach where I have a maybe a larger style spline. I'll control some of it with an arc and then make our actual smaller style spline curvature continuous as required. So this will be used as the basis for an additional boundary surface. So this boundary surface is going to be created between the rear of the handle and the parting line. And this is a situation where I'm using the trim by direction one to actually make a smaller than required boundary surface. So if I turn this option off, we don't even get a preview. It doesn't know what to do, but it might have actually built a, uh, a larger surface between all of these profiles. But ultimately I just need one to build between here and this back edge and note the tangency to face to ensure the correct draft angle. We'll continue with a, another boundary surface that is end up going to be built oversized and then trimmed back. So this boundary surface is created between the flat portion of our trigger flat, the straight edge here, and then a partial section of this edge. So in the boundary surface, if I had just picked this edge, uh, the UV curves, the kind of underlying geometry of the surface aren't really nice here. You can see these kind of underlying lines are wavy and undulating, not the best uh, shape. So what we can do is grab this connector here and just kind of drag this back and make a much more natural looking surface. So we can just kind of adjust that until our grid lines look nice and straight and we're happy with the result. One thing I found with these kinds of, uh, of boundary surfaces where one of the edges is supported, remember we didn't actually have a profile here, I would just kind of let SolidWorks figure it out based on the, the connecting this edge to this edge. But I find as, as a best practice is to just kind of trim that geometry back. We don't necessarily need to use all of it and sometimes the geometry here can be uh, it can have some poor curvature. It's almost like it was a, a tarp kind of flapping in the wind. So I find by trimming it back, we get a, a much nicer connection. And ultimately what we've done here is outlined a five-sided transition for our surface fill to live within. So we're going to knit all this together such that we have a closed perimeter. 
and we're going to create an additional guide surface for our boundary surface or for our surface fill. So I could have actually made uh, the surface fill just contact uh, connection G0 to this face, but I find it can be a little better to actually guide the surface fill. So what I've done here is created a 3D sketch and I've just made it uh, tan or a little straight line section tangent here and I made a straight line section that's been converted from a layout sketch and inherently it is uh, also tangent to this edge. And so what I can now do is create a boundary surface between here. So instead of making our surface fill G0 connection to this face, I will actually make it G1 connection to this face here. And this will help just better guide and shape the surface fill. So now the surface fill, when we do go to create it, can actually be guided on all five sides. If I didn't have this here, it wouldn't be able to have an idea of what it should look like in this portion. But because it needs to be made tangent, I'm better guiding the shape of the surface fill here. Now ultimately this uh, surface fill will need to be made uh, curvature continuous, but I just start with all of my edges as tangency. So here I'll set all of the edges in the surface fill to tangent. We'll click OK. And then I'll use the zebra stripes to evaluate our transition. So I can kind of see here the, the fact that there's not a smooth transition, there is a hard edge. This indicates a, a G1 connection. So even though the stripes touch, uh, that is but uh, they're not entirely smooth there. So I'll probably want to go back in and adjust that. So I'll click through my list of edges until I find the edge I want, edge here. And we'll just set that to curvature. Take a look at our zebra stripes and we have a much smoother connection there. So I, I don't have that, uh, that hard edge that I had before. I have a nice flowing transition and I'll continue to go through and adjust surface edges of the surface fill as required such that I have a really nice looking G2 connection between all the adjacent faces. So to recap what we just covered in SolidWorks, we're finishing this portion of the handle by creating a flat portion for the trigger using a surface extrude. We're going to overbuild our surface and trim back as required. We're going to continue building four-sided surfaces with the boundary surface tool. Here I had to turn on trim direction one such that the edge was trimmed back so that way we didn't create a much larger boundary surface because we'll be using the surface fill to help uh, finish this area. We're creating guides for the surface fill, so I created a boundary surface between two profiles here and a single profile here. I created this larger than it needed to be, but still was smaller than if I just used the entire edge. And I did that by grabbing the connector and dragging it back. Ultimately, I did trim the surface back as a best practice. I created an additional guide surface with a additional boundary surface, and this was done between a 3D sketch here and here, and then this profile. And this is just gonna help further guide the surface fill by allowing us to make it tangent to the surface instead of G0 contact to this flat face here. We're creating a closed profile as required by knitting everything together. And finally, we're creating the surface fill now that we have our five-sided transition outlined with our various guide surfaces. We're going to start with the tangent condition on all of the different edges, and then, as required, add curvature after evaluating the zebra stripes here. Sometimes if you add curvature prematurely to all of the different uh, edges of the model, you can actually get uh, weird dimples and divots. It almost looks like your surface fill got kicked in. So best practice, start with tangency on everything, evaluate, and add curvature as required. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. Be sure to check out the example SolidWorks files on the Demani Group website linked in the description below. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Happy SolidWorks Surfacing!